Hi everyone, it's Heart with Lines here um, with Loris from Alonzo King Lines Ballet. Hi Loris. Hi. Tell us your full name and where you are right now. So my name is Lois Eichinger. Uh, I'm in my room in San Francisco. Um, yeah. Fantastic. And so you and I have been talking a little bit and you've been telling me um, what you've been up to since the um, dance center and the company have been on shelter in place. Tell us how you've been spending your time. So I try mostly to, you know, uh, keep in shape and train at home. So because it's not always easy to dance at home, it's kind of small and, you know, I can't do everything. I've been uh, doing a lot of cross training. So Pilates, I do gyro, I go for runs, uh, I do my own little workout. Um, yeah, to try to just stay in shape. Um, and then, of course, I've done a few ballet bars uh, as much as I can when I'm motivated enough. <laughs> And yeah, and I try also to use this time to experiment with different um, types of dance and techniques because there's so much available right now online with Instagram lives and Zoom classes and all of this that, yeah, I try to grab a little bit so that I don't go at the end of this and regret not having taken that chance. So tell us about your newfound um, interest. What new <laughs> classes are you taking? So I've been taking uh, Cunningham classes on um, Merstras and on Instagram, um, which I've never done before. So that was a big challenge for me because it's very different than you know what I'm used to. Um, it's very different coordination and um, yeah, like isolations of the upper body and and work in parallel a lot, which we're not mostly used to. Um, yeah, so that's a great challenge for me, I think. Something to push for. Now, are we looking at the space that you're training in? It doesn't look very big. No, it's not very big, no. Yeah. And, and, and how tall are you? I'm six, seven. <laughs> um, are you able to move big? It looks like maybe you might be banging into walls every now and then. Um, so, yeah, I, it's... I feel like the space this way is just big enough that I could, you know, do enough. But in the, and you see that chandelier right here? It, <laughs> I've hit it a few times with my leg and my arms. So oh, yeah, no. it's challenging, but <laughs> I, I've, I don't have the worst situation, so I can't complain. Oh my goodness. So tell us what you were doing before the shelter in place happened. I understand that um, Alonzo King Lines Ballet was on tour. That sounds like it was a challenging um, experience. Yes, so we left uh, in the middle of February to Europe for a European tour where we went to Germany, Switzerland, Italy, and France. So um, the first week was, I I was, it was really great. Um, it was the beginning of uh, COVID-19 um, in Europe. And by the time we got to Italy, that's where Italy started shutting down. And so all our shows got canceled in Italy and we had to like kind of run away from the virus and from Italy straight to France. Um, so we kind of had a weird standby uh, period of time where we were just rehearsing, uh, not performing. Um, as it was happening, it was okay. But looking back at it, 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 it was a stressful time, yeah. Stressful time. And you're originally from France, is that right? Yes. What part of France are you from? Um, so I've lived most of my life in uh, the southeast of France, in Grenoble, next to Lyon. We actually toured there in November uh, with Lines. Um, but now my mom lives in Paris and my dad lives, uh, still lives in Grenoble. So is it is it there that you started dancing? Do you remember when you first had your first dance experience? Uh, yeah, so, um, actually, my first dance experience was uh, in the suburbs of Paris when we lived there. And um, it was this kind of creative movement class for really young uh, uh, children. So I must have been like four or five. I love and, how you, uh, I love how you shimmy yeah. your shoulders on the creative movement. Creative dance. movement. Yay. <laughs> um, Yes, I must have been four or five, and um, it w there was an open class, and my mom um, came to this open class, and the task for us was to impersonate the storm, 
and she just she keeps she always tells me about this story that you know I was with my curly blonde hair and lit cheeks a, a bit like chubby child and I was just running around the studio like <laughs> try, trying to imitate the storm so <laughs> that's great that's great and then fast forward you, or actually before we fast forward I understand you have a picture of yourself as a young dancer can you share that with us yes. so there it is. Um, so I must be 16 on here. And this was sent to me this morning by my Pilates teacher, which I love. And um, we were laughing about it because I'm on a reformer, a Pilates reformer, and my top leg is touching the ceiling. And so we were joking about how it would be now, probably just through the ceiling. <laughs> and where was that picture taken? So this was at uh, the School of American Ballet in New York City, uh, where I trained for three years. So you started in France. Mm -hmm. Many things happened. You eventually yes. trained in New York City. Many more things happened. And yes. then I understand it took a few tries before you actually um, were invited to join Lines. Can you tell us about that? Yes. So <laughs> I auditioned three times in total for Lines. Um, I, I think actually every three years, pretty much. Um, yeah, so the first time I was really young, it must have been 1920. Um, it was really hard audition, it was really intense. I was invited for three days um, in the studio. Um, yeah, and then I kind of, you know, went on and auditioned another time. And they told me I was, again, a bit young and not mature enough and not strong enough. Um, and then I got into a company in Israel where I got more mature, got more experience, and then I did my third edition, and, and this was the one. That's great. And you joined the company in July, is that right? Yes. Uh, yeah, like eight, eight, nine months ago. Yeah. And now you live in San Francisco. What's your favorite thing about San Francisco? So... Um, Actually, it, 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 I don't know, it was weird because we were traveling so much and we were so busy that I didn't really have time to discover the city. Like I would, you know, I would go to restaurants and I would go see friends, but I, didn't, I don't feel like I had this moment with the city. And now being here and being just home and doing nothing, I've actually had time to really walk around and, you know, take my runs and I, I go random places. I just like to get lost in my neighborhood. I live in Noe Valley. Um, and yeah, to just, I don't know, look at the houses, look at the parks. There's so many beautiful trees and um, yeah, it's just like a, a great area to walk around and to enjoy. I don't think you can find this in every city. Yeah, and we've been lucky with really beautiful spring weather right now. Yeah. So you're at home, you're making it work. Um, you are cross training. Um, do you have any words of advice or encouragement for young dancers who are trying to stay fit and stay connected working from home? Um, yeah, I think, you know, it's definitely challenging for everybody. Um, some people don't even have, you know, the space to do anything. They don't have the equipment to do much. Um, but I think we all have to find our ways kind of to to do it I don't know sometimes I feel like inside is too much so I try to go outside and try to dance outside and things like this um, and you shouldn't pressure yourself to do something all the time but I think that once you do something you really should commit like 300 percent into it because you know you don't have a teacher maybe watching you you don't have the uh, the the vibe of the room um, you know that motivates you it's it's harder definitely to motivate yourself so I think you really have to focus on what you're doing in the moment. And if you're cross-training, if you're dancing, you really have to push it even, even more, maybe more than what you would do in class because it's just such a different energy here. And now there's so many opportunities to train. Yeah. So much content online. It's, a, it's an interesting opportunity. Just like you, you're discovering new things. So, yeah. yeah. All right, so last question. What's the first thing you're going to do once the shelter in place is lifted? <laughs> uh, I think I'm definitely going to, you know, go out on the town and see friends, go to restaurants. Um, yeah, definitely maybe have a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
get out of the house. See if you can stretch yeah. your arms and legs past your windows and, and walls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to us. Of course, we all can't wait to see you back on stage, um, but hopefully we'll find some of the same inspiration you found with classes and maybe we'll run past you on Noe Valley yes. Street over the next <laughs> couple of weeks. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>